Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, as we begin back our series, I pray in a special way, Lord, that you will guide our thoughts, give us right interpretation, right explanation, right understanding, enlighten our minds, Lord, to go forward, I pray. So I pray that you will cleanse me from my sins, cleanse all of us from our sins, Lord, that you may reveal light unto us. And you are, your presence is here with us because light is a symbol of your presence. So continue to be with us, Lord. Enlighten our minds with your presence and enlighten our life with your presence, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So as we continue, we want to jump back into the notes. <clears throat> so we'll jump back into the notes and continue where we left off. Amen. The point that the apostle is making is clearly seen by a reference to the prophecy of Habakkuk 2, from which he quotes, The vision is now truly being written and made plain on tables. All right, stop right there. Um, this quote is from a pioneer's writing. So um, I just want us to be aware of that. All right, continue. And though, as we see in the prophecy referred to, verse 4, Men's <coughs> souls will be lifted up. That is. Man's soul will be what? Lifted up. And then they tell you the meaning of what that is saying. Amen? All right, continue. They will manifest a spirit of opposition to the work of God. What is the spirit of opposition? Opposition? To be lifted up. The spirit of opposition is the spirit of Antichrist. Antichrist. Amen. Right? So those who lift up themselves against wow. these messages, the 2520 is a part of the message. So, all of those who are lifting up their self against the 2520, the spirit of Antichrist. We have to believe it. Right? Continue. And finally, carry out their opposition in settled persecution. And what? Settle what? Persecution. Virgin, we are going to get persecuted. Virgin, we are going to get persecuted. This light and this reform, this, this reform movement and the messages on the chart, Virgin, we are going to get persecuted. So I'm, I make up my mind and I'm praying concerning to this, that God help me to be settled. When persecution come, you know, move me. You understand? We settle. You understand? Continue. And yet the judge shall live by his faith. Paul's advice as well as his encouragement at this point of time is altogether necessary. Ye have need of patience. Amen. Continue. These men were all indulging the very spirit of Antichrist. Thus, I have defined what Babylon or Antichrist is. It is everything that rises in opposition to the personal reign of Christ on David's throne mm -hmm. and to the revealed time for his appearing. And here we do find the professed Christian world, Catholic and Protestant, on the side of Antichrist. They all say, let us take the kingdom and let Christ and the departed saints that have suffered with him to whom the kingdom has been promised Remain where they are. Amen. All right. So um, that quote, the reason I put that quote there is for us to understand that the Antichrist spirit is just something that, or a spirit that oppose, opposed God's work. Right? All right. So keep, keep that in mind. So this quote that we are going to read right now, I really love this quote. This quote gives me confidence that this message is the right message. This message is the right path, and this message, when we live according to this message, Virgin, I'm, I'm begging you, please, don't give up. And pray for me if you not give up. Me, I'm begging you, please. We need the prayer. All right? Um, continue Chantel with the other quote. He made a statement to the effect that he understood the Lord was on the point of turning from this people to others who would give the message of righteousness by faith, and that sister wife cried with brokenness of heart not to do this. What? And not to do what? God, is a, God, is, God says to sister wife that he's going to turn away from his people. 
because they reject the message. Which message? The message of righteousness by faith. You understand? And Sister Why cried to God, said not to do that. Right? She did what Moses did. Exactly. Right. She did what Moses did. Me. Me Amen. 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 That means they started to make that, that, that golden the cow image. in your mind. I think in Jeremiah it says that your molten image is your own understanding. So once we started to form a religion based on our own understanding, we started to set a golden cow. Amen. Um, and the Lord revealed to her that this work would not be permitted to go down into debt and unbelief. This what? This work. Will not what? Go down. To debt and what? Unbelief. Virgin? Me believe this hundred percent. If me left this message and this movement, the reform line and the charts, Bridging, God is going to raise up somebody else. Yeah. If none of us left this message, God is going to raise up somebody else and put that person in our place. Bridging, that's what I'm saying. Pray for me as we pray for each other. God is yeah, 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 what yeah, yeah, what she says. God will not make his work go down to death and unbelief. God is not going to allow that to happen. He's going to watch over a movement. Go ahead. That he would watch over it and that our movement would continue to the end. And that those who would stand by it would be on safe ground. Oh, so we are what on? Safe ground. All of us here is on safe ground. The best of the land. The best of the land. Virgin, I love this quote. This quote gives me confidence that this message is the safe ground. Virgin, we are on safe ground, and that comfort me. You understand? So, nothing is like you are on safe ground with Christ. Christ in me, what? The hope of glory. All right, um, continue, Chantel, please, and thanks. It says, there are many ways that lead to perdition, but it is clearly intimated that to reject the light of the third message of Revelation 14, it's certain perdition. Simple. There's many ways to perdition, but they name one of the ways of perdition is to reject the third angel message. And Sister Wise says that the third angel message is righteousness by faith. So when they reject the message of righteousness by faith, is certain perdition. You understand? Mm -hmm. Only perdition. So now I can understand why they say that when people reject the message. When I reject the message, Virgin, a perdition. Surely perdition. Surely. You're not going to miss it. All right, so people may say, Virgin, if I reject it 2520, I'm going to go into perdition. They are going to say, if I reject the chart, then I'm going to go into perdition. That is what they said. If I reject the message, if I reject the third angel message, and Sister Wise says that the third angel message made plain upon what? Tables. On the tables, which is um, oh. Oh, nickels, right? So we can see this is the third angel message. And says that this third angel message is righteousness by faith. So I say, Lord, I go over to each other. I say, God, righteousness by faith. You said that the third angel message made plain upon a chart. And then you said that the third angel message is righteousness by faith. So all these messages must teach me righteousness by faith. I say, God. Then the Lord said, turn to Hebrews. So I'm going to turn to Hebrews 11, verse 1. Right? And the Lord said, read on. And then I reach, when I reach a part when the Bible says in verse 6, in um, chapter 11, it says that it is impossible to please God, what? Without faith. Right? So, to have righteousness by faith, to please in God. And the Lord said, read on, man. Then they start to give you the experience of the, of, um, the prophets and the servants of God. They start to give you the experience of their faith. Yes. I say, Lord, what have, what have to do with each other? Well, the Lord showed me clearly as they that all those prophets point into the message on the chart. I say, God, you're powerful. I can't see lying out literally and spiritually. Oh, I say that the Lord showed me that Moses, um, I don't remember that, that one. I have to go read it. But, I don't have time to go there, but um, I'm going to bring up um, one of them. The Bible says that Enoch was translated by what? By faith, by faith right? Yeah. So the Lord said, put righteousness by faith. It's by righteousness by faith Enoch was translated. And the Bible said Enoch was translated by faith, not seeing death. 
So I say, the Bible says Christ is our righteousness. So that means that Enoch have to have Christ's righteousness. So I say, Lord, show me you in Enoch. Show me this. Show me this. If I don't see you in this, I can't see no light. You understand? So show me you in this. And the Lord said, I represent Enoch. So I say, Lord, you're dead on the cross. You did die and resurrected. So the Bible says Enoch was translated without seeing death. And I say, I may mean, question myself, I Mr. Lord, please give me the answer. And the Lord said, guess what? You have human, and you have divine. Human die, divine never die. And I say, oh. The divine represent Enoch, and the human part of Christ represent Moses. And I say, oh. That give me more faith. To believe and to continue. I say, God, this is powerful. And the Lord said, as long as I look upon the cross, all you're seeing, human and divine. You're seeing yourself being translated. If you are part of the 144,000 without seeing death. And if you are part of the great number, you symbolize Moses. I say, God, I like, I like that part. And there's, there's much more. But I just want to share that because that helped me to understand more the human and the divine of Christ. He is that he said he is. Amen? All right, so um, let us continue. All right, this, is, this, 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 this part is, is the last part of this um, study. And I really love this last part. This, part. this last part tell me clearly, clearly and distinctly that we are God's last day church. Nobody, brethren, if me never hear from Brother Kennard, me never hear from Swindon, me never hear, if me never hear from Richard, Arumar, I'm going to read this. This tell me, say, we are the last remnant. All right, um, continue. The prophecy is a double one. Looking forward to the great advent movement of the last days, the writer of Hebrews quotes verse 3 and 4 and applies them to the second coming of Christ. See Hebrews 10, 37 and 38. So, um, Abba Cook, Abacook is dealing with the second coming of Christ because Paul um, quote from Abacook said you just shall live by faith and Paul used that to refer to the second coming of Christ and if I read the Pionism writing they do say that Abacook dealing with the second coming of Christ Amen. right so that that helped me to understand that Christ really want to come in us before he come a second time Amen. which is the first second time all right um, continue then speaking of the receiving of this same promise he says Hebrews 10, 36, for, he, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. He then quotes from this passage of Habakkuk, showing that he understands it to apply to Christ's coming, verses 37 and 38. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by his faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. What Habakkuk calls the vision, Paul calls he, Christ, the bridegroom. Amen. Amen. I, I, like, I like this part. What Habakkuk call what? The vision. He call, Paul call it what? Christ, the bridegroom. The bridegroom what? Uh, no, you see, no, you realize no, why. Five. Amen. Amen. No, you see why um, the millerists understand it that way. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, continue. Ah, uh, so in order for everyone, everyone who really gets a proper understanding of Habakkuk will have a better understanding of Matthew 25. And if we yes. cannot see that Matthew 25 is repeating our times because we're not living by our faith. Amen. 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 So we do not have that, that expectation because the Bible said Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So we too must believe God yes. and it would also be accounted unto us for Amen. righteousness. Amen. I like to share that because this thought come to my mind. I was reading what the parents um, said about the disappointment. They said that after the disappointment, um, most of the virgin leave, leave the movement, and they, they see the virgin start to mock them and scan them. Mm -hmm. How you not reach up yet? The same people them were preaching message to them you know, before 1844. Yeah. Go backward and fall backward, and they come and mock them. Who stand on the message. And 
they, 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 they said that the Lord give them this text in Habakkuk, they just shall live by faith. Do it, tarry, wait for it. And they say, oh, then the Bible says they just shall live by faith. So they use that text now to comfort them. So God give them that text to comfort them. And they said to those who are mocking them and scan them, be careful what you are saying out of your mouth because God is going to judge you according to your words. You understand? And then they quote the text from Habakkuk and they said, Look, my Lord, no, enter into the most holy place. So we are the just, we are to live by faith. And I said, Whoa. Amen. That is a strong rebuke. You understand? Oh, brethren, people out there mock me and say, Here, you must say, God, I two God in heaven. And three God. But the Bible says, One God, so they mock me. I tell you, they mock me. But if me, never, if me never have that faith and that confidence in the word of God, I feel shame and walk away from Christ. But because I have that faith and that confidence, I say, yes, a tree. Because the Bible said that there, is tree, there are three that be recorded in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy. And these three are what? One. Simple as that. So they, they, that, 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 that build me confidence in the, in the personality of God. Build it strongly. And that, that text hold me fast. When I just come in the church, that text me learn. And he hold me even until now. He hold me. I say, God, they're powerful. And those who deny it, he never hold them. Because they never believe it. All right, so continue, Shanta. All right. This text, sorry, this text, I love this text. This quote, Virgin, I want, I want every one of us to listen to this text carefully. And I'm going to go very slow on this text. I love this, I love this one. Go ahead. It says, and Habakkuk warns of the coming of the Chaldeans. Habakkuk 1, 6 and rebukes sin, but he rises to a new height in his glimpse of the great truth that the just shall live by his faith. He sees the time when the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. You see where? As you see Revelation 18. Yes. Habakkuk says Revelation 18. Amen. As the waters oh. cover the sea. But he gives no hint as to how or when this is to come to pass. Chapter 3. The prayer of Habakkuk is full of poetic imagery which pictures the punishment of the nations and the salvation of God's people. Amen. Continue. What built up Jerusalem at the first? What delivered them from Babylon and brought them there to carry out God's instruction and to rebuild the city? It was that message which was given to Habakkuk, the prophet. And what was the message? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, Amen. that he may run that readeth it. What, what delivered him from Babylon? The message of Habakkuk. I see him thing for us today. Yes. The only message can deliver God's people from Babylon is just righteousness by faith. Habakkuk, the Bible said he just shall live by faith. And that deliver Martin Luther. Amen. That is what they say. Let us continue. I want us to see it. For the vision is yet for an unappointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And that was the message that was to be made so plain, engraved upon tables, that the object lesson might stand out before the people. The one thing to be taught was this life, life not place, not ceremony, not creed, but life. And that life through a personal faith in the life giver and in him who is the life. Amen. And that was the message which was to call them, out, call them up out of Babylon and bring them into their own land again. That they might build the city and they did it. Amen. Amen. So, what I'm getting from this, Abaku message is a life message. Amen. Is well, we understand that all of the message that God sent us is life and death. Yeah. Understand? But what I mean by life message is a lifestyle message. Yeah. 
You understand? We are to live by that message. All right, continue. After the centuries of falling away and of darkness and of the losing of that message. Losing of what? The message. All right, continue. This period of the dark ages. Every time, every time God loses his message, he brings a darkness. Every time. That is what I'm getting from this. He, every time God's people lose the message, he bring poor darkness. That's why church now in darkness because they reject the message. All right, continue. This period of the dark ages through which this world has passed, they are begun to shine out in the 16th century, a light that would lead the people out of darkness. And what was the keynote of that movement? The just shall live by his faith. Mm -hmm. This was the inspiration and the power of that movement. If that one simple truth had been allowed to hold its place, the reformation which began then could have gone on with, un with unstemmed tide until the earth would have been lightened with its glory mm -hmm. and the kingdom of God would have come. But it went backward after a while. And why? For the very same reason as of old. Instead of facing and walking in the light all the time, they became fearful, turned back, inquired for the fathers, began to accept tradition, and lost the power of their message. Mm -hmm. So I believe every one of us understand the quote so far, right? So Virgin, I do not want to lose this message. And many of us is going to lose the message because we keep on we keep on at the opposite from what God called us to do. So God is saying, go forward by faith. You understand? Move forward. Faith, let, let, um, help us to move forward. You understand? So when, when, when they lose the message, they run back. You understand? When God tell them, say, go forward. Go forward by faith. And I see in principle for us, for us right now, God is saying, go forward. This is what I want to do. I want to go forward in my character, in my life, in the message, in every part of my life. I want to go forward. Amen? Because going forward is to grow. Amen? All right. Um, this, this, this part, this text now that I, um, I wanted to read, one of the reasons I put these notes in is to read it out and every one of us can hear it and have understanding of it. They can, you can go and look at it again, and I know that you will find um, something, something that um, I don't see as yet. But what I do with these um, verses and these texts is I just take each words and study them out. You understand? Because if you, uh, when I read that um, the Bible says Babylon, that word Babylon means confusion. And that word, confu that word Babylon means confusion, and that word confusion means darkness. So what I do, I just trace out the word in the Bible. But because of time, I will just run through this, and then I just pick up this at another time, no, by God's grace. You still have one more presentation. Yes, I will just pick up some of these points. So what I do, I just take the word and run through the Bible with it. I just read the pianism writing and the sister I write in and I just take each word. I run through the Bible with it and see um, if you line up with this. And then the Lord give more light to what um, to understand. Alright? Alright, so continue. No, not not yet. I want to continue with the quote. Habakkuk continues and say, and say, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. No, here is the message, here is the vision. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, what was he told to do? He was told to write this vision, to make it plain upon tables, that he who runs may read. And the vision was just this one thing, the just shall live by his faith. This is the key to all of the visions. 
This is the key to all the prophets. This is the summing up in one sentence of the whole of the prophecy of Daniel. Continue. Now in following out that suggestion, as we have thought, we have put visions upon tables and charts to make them plain to the people. What have you made plain to the people? So that if one is just running by, he can see it as he passes and get the message? Have you made the chart so clear and plain that in this age of All haste right. and hurry? All right, so um, I, just, I just wanted to read more slow. All right. When you All right. So hold on. So this 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 working the Lord teach us to um work this way. Um as I was saying earlier concerning the testimony that I share where God sent me a month ago be. And after when God sent me a month ago be and I work this way, then after I find this quote, I'm say, Whoa. I and this is the same thing that I do a month ago be the last couple of weeks. I'm look back on it, I'm reading it back over and over again. I'm say, God, this you can't believe this. <laughs> And then this gave me confidence of God. He really wants to give us his spirit. You understand? The same spirit that the Millerites have, God is going to give us the same spirit. You understand? If we study and pray and be converted, you understand? God is going to give us the same spirit. But the Bible says God give his spirit to those who what? obey him. Amen. Continue. The just shall live by faith. This is the key to all the visions. This is the key to all the prophets. This is the summing up in one sentence of the whole of the prophecy of Daniel. All right, so this is what I love about this. This is just the key. This is just the one knowledge where God is helping us to understand. The just shall live by faith. It's just righteousness by faith. The message come to give us righteousness by faith. What I claim to realize that in the time when God sent the message, righteousness by faith, the conference church rejected the, the other conference churches rejected, and they, basically they, they, they died. You understand? So God wanted to bring up back a conference, you understand, and to give us the message that we may run with it. You understand? To give it to the people because all of this message is just one message. It's just righteousness by faith. You understand? Everything that we teach, I'm, I'm literally seeing it. Everything that we teach is just righteousness by faith. Amen? All right, continue. Uh, there's one other point, because um, the Bible says, show me your faith and I will show you my works. So I believe this is, all, this is what the Lord is also saying to us here is, if we truly believe it, then we need to commit to it. Mm -hmm. Because we also need to commit. So it was my father that I was saying that when we leave here, God expects us to um, begin to do Amen. these things that he is showing us right here. Because to do it is to show that we're living by our faith. Amen. You know? Yes. Amen. Um, now, in following up that suggestion, as we have taught, we have put visions upon tape. I read that already. So when you will perhaps will get a man to hear you only once and you must give him then the message of salvation or lose him. Have you written the chart so plainly that it has stood right out and he who passed by look in, listen a few moments, heard perhaps one talk, got the message, the judge shall live by his faith. Have the chart simply had on them pictures of beasts, pictures of images, pictures of symbols, some figures, some measuring lines, some comparisons, so that those who came in and looked said, what a queer thing this is, can't be much interesting. In this. What is the message in every symbol in the book of Daniel? In every vision, the life of every data, data, just, just this one message, righteousness by faith, Christ dwelling in you. Have you been studying the book of Daniel? Have you been preaching the book of Daniel? Have you got the vision so clear and plain that the common man 
and the uncommon man, the slow man, and the hasty man all get the same message. That same Advent message that fills the book of Daniel and fills the book of Revelation, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. And give, then give you a little understanding um, further on. They said that righteousness by faith is just Christ in you. Yes. you understand? It's just Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right, um, we can continue. Why do we want it? For the very same reason that they wanted it. To get us out of Babylon. That the, they had the message before they went to Babylon. So have we. They were God's people, so are we. They did not hear the message. They would not listen to the prophet, neither have we. They went on their way, so have we. They went just where God saw they would go, so have we. But God did not leave them then. His prophets continued to prophesy, so they do now. The same message. So it is, what for? To get them out of Babylon. The message would have saved them from Babylon. The message had power enough in it to bring them out of Babylon after they got it. Got in. Amen? Got in. Amen. So um, this message that God gave us is a powerful message and it helped us to come out of Babylon. When I come to this message, I'm telling you, it changed my whole life. You understand? I mean, in my church, it never really changed me that much. This Christ was working in me a little bit. But when I come to this message, Virginia, I feel the change. I literally feel it effectively, effectively in, in my life. You understand? I can feel it. And then I can feel if I'm going off as well. I literally can feel it. I can feel it when I'm right with Christ, and I can feel it when I'm not right with Christ. So these messages point us to Christ and it help us to change. You understand? So God wants us, want, want us to see that the message can change us. If we only listen to the message and we not see it can change us, it's not going to do nothing for us. You understand? We want this, I want to see it and I want us to see that it can change us. Alright? Um, continue. We want this message. No, just think a moment. In the book of Daniel, ancient Babylon is set forth while God's people are down there, Daniel in Babylon, yet not in Babylon at all. In Babylon, but not of Babylon. In confusion, but not confused. But with his people down there in ancient Babylon, then God opened up the mind of that faithful prophet, the message that would get them out, but he did not stop there. Then he showed to him, and through him he showed to us that away down, Centuries from that time, his people would be still in Babylon and would have to be brought out and that it was the same message that would bring them out. The just shall live. By his faith. Faith. Amen. So, Revelation 18, um, them coming out of Babylon is just a manifestation that they are living by their faith. Amen. The new form faith that they have found, which is Christ. In Amen. Them, the hope of Amen. So um, I, just, I just want to skip past this um, whole reading. There's a lot of reading here. I just want to skip past some of it because I don't really want to weary us with these reading. All right, so I just want to skip past this one. The bottom one, after um, you read the first one, Chantel, you will see that um, when it says building up of the... The building up of ancient Jerusalem? Yeah. That's the last reading on the page. Amen. Can I come? Go ahead. The building up of ancient Jerusalem was simply the object lesson of history. The building up of the temple again was simply the object lesson of history to teach us the truth, the reality of these things. Amen. So, the build, building up of um, Jerusalem, they, they build upon the history, right? The building up of um, us right now, we have to build upon the history. So these, these meetings are to build up on the history of our past. You understand? And I really love this quote because it comforts me to know that um, God is guiding us. You understand? It's a special guiding that we are um, under right now. And I don't want to leave this special guiding. So Bridging, just pray.
pray for me as um, my prayer for each other because I can see the warfare coming. It's already here, but it is more intense in the future. You understand? And a lot of people are going to rise up against this, um, what we are doing. Literally, they are going to rise up against it. You understand? And they do not want to hear the truth preach in the purity, meaning that call the Catholic Church Babylon, call the Catholic Church all nastiness upon this earth. You understand? If I said that the Catholic Church is like a garbage truck, they are going to say, don't say that. Yes, it's like a garbage truck. You understand? Because you, you, you drive around, spread out like garbage, and collect every garbage. Yep. You understand? So it's like a garbage truck. So people do not, natural, these natural people do not understand that this, these, that's why God wants spiritual people. You understand? God really wants spiritual people. You understand? So I can see that um, we are going to be spiritually, and the Bible says that either worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right? So I just want to close with this point. So I want to get this part interested now. All right? Um, oh, can, all right. All right. Kira, remind me of a text with your love. I remind us of a text that always come to your mind. God always bring to your mind. You don't have, have to quote the number where you come from. You can just quote it for your mind. If you want to quote the number as well, no problem. But you don't have to struggle with that in your thoughts. Go again. Matthew. And John. Any text, any text we can remember easily, any text. John 3, 16. You can remember John 3, 16. So God so loved the world. Okay. All right. So Kira, remember that text. All right? All right. Um, Brother Amara, can you give us a text you remember? Easily. Um, and the, uh, now, excuse me, now, now faith is something of things hope for, for evidence, evidence of things, things not seen. seen. Amen. Amen. So you remember that text clearly. Clearly. All right, Brother Richard, you can keep. Um, you can give us a text we always keep in mind and always remember. Amen. Amen. Brother Swing Dan, you can give us a text we always remember. Amen. Brother Clear and can give us a text we always remember. Amen. All right, brother Kenard, I can give us a text we always remember. Amen. Sister Chantel, I can give us a text we always remember. Amen. So, Oshin, you can give us a text we always remember. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. Um, <laughs> whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue, if there be praise, and there is praise, think of all these things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Bridget, when you, when you understand, when you just show. Yeah, when you, under, when, you just, when you just understand, when you just show just a while ago. All right. Read. You can read um, Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember? 
Remember? The Sabbath day to what? Keep. So to remember and to keep holy. To remember means also to keep holy. So every text that we remember is to keep our mind holy. Amen. That is the beauty I love about that. When I read that text, I say, Lord, what, what you are saying to me concerning this? The Lord say, do you remember this about it to keep it holy? Any text you remember in the Bible, have to keep your mind holy. And the Lord said, that is the spirit of the Sabbath. You have to bring the spirit of the Sabbath through the week. You understand that? That's why Sister Wise says that Bible study is important. You understand? We must comment as text into our mind daily. That means to keep our mind holy. You understand? So, when the Bible says that we are to be holy as our Father is in heaven, as our Father in heaven is holy, is holy that means we can, we can do it. If that we remember text, we can do it. We can keep our, as long as I can remember, as long as I can keep our thoughts holy upon the word, you can keep your action, your arm, um, your affection, your feelings holy. Amen. You understand? So I just want us to see that principle. Um, one of the reasons why I bring up that, um, go ahead. Want to share something? No. Oh. Um, one of the reasons why I bring up that, I always, I always remember this text. And it set me, it set me free. It really set me free. And it set me free indeed. Um, this text when it says, uh, this text when it says, um, Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5 and 6 and 7. Verse 5, 6. Verse 5 and 6. When it says that the living, whether they shall die, but the dead know not anything. So, exactly. Gotten. Amen. So I I bring up that text because God used that that text to set me free from certain things. When I was coming up as a young man, I usually freddy freddy. You understand? Like I'm usually afraid of things where people tell me say like they usually tell me dopey dopey story and they usually tell me like uh, I usually watch movie. Even in movie I scare me to death, I still I watch it. You understand? It's like I'm bound to it. I can't move. You understand? I say, Lord. I, I want to start watching it, but I don't know if it set myself free from it. And then, I, I always believe that when people die, they go to hell or they go to heaven. You understand? And then, uh, there was a day I was, pray, I was praying and then I read, um, I turned the Bible and I, I, I don't know why I come to that text, but I, I find myself start reading that text. I say, but, and me read it back over. Come here, take me time and I read it. Come here, try to pronounce the words. I mean, I read it back over me and say, what is that text say I said to me? And I me keep on, I me keep on, I me understand it. Then me hear other people with it and then start to explain it. And when I start to think upon it, I'm telling you, it remove a lot of darkness out of my mind. It remove a lot. I tell you, the darkness when you fool my mind, you remove it completely. It, up to this day, they never come back. Yes, never. Sometimes, two of me did believe in, in these things. I can't stand up here so in the dark. I mean, I dark. Two of my mind believe it. I think I see somebody right there so when I don't see nobody. Two of me strongly. Two of Satan did have me bandage at night. You understand? And then God used that text and delivered me. And the Lord showed me that every time I remember that text, is to keep your mind holy. Brethren, you really keep my mind holy. You really sanctify my mind and set it apart from light to darkness. Amen? So I just want us to... Um, sorry? From darkness. Oh, I mean, from darkness to light. Amen? So um, thanks very much. So thanks for listening. And this text always... This text sticking in my mind, Habakkuk chapter 2. I don't know what I mean. It just sticking. From the moment me here... <laughs> it's sticking in my mind. I don't know why. It just sticking in my mind, and it keep myself. It keep my mind holy. There's a there's a day me ah me day home, and me feel like I give up. And me say, Lord, me I go give up. Me I go walk out of this house. Me I just give up and give in. I just go in our world. And the Lord say, you're going to, after everything you learn about Abba Cook and the church, you're going to give up everything and just leave it just so. And me say, Lord, no, I'm not going to do it. Then me turn back because the Lord remind me of Abba Cook. You understand? All of this we are learning are going to give up here. And when we look back, we see charts hang up on the wall. 
The Lord said, you're going to reject all of this. The Lord asked me a question. From that day, when I said, no, Lord, I'm going to turn back. Satan never take me that again. So, Virgin, let us study the Bible and understand what the Bible says because it's going to set us free. Literally going to set us free. And that text Habakkuk is set me free from Babylon naturally and spiritually. It, me see, literally has set me free. My men are free from everything, but it will do a work. And it's going to complete. I believe it's going to complete. Because I see work has start. I see work start and it's going to finish. Amen? So I just want to close with this thought. Thanks again for um, being patient and listening to what the Lord has rest on my heart to share. So um, I just want us to kneel as we have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace towards us. We thank you for your divine providence to continually be with us and to guide and protect us. So we pray, Lord, that you will um, help us to come out of Babylon Help us to come out of confusion and out of darkness, I pray, because I really want to come out, Lord, and you have given us the key to hope and, and to help us to come out. So help us, Lord, to come out victorious. Help us, Lord, to be a part of your, your calling, Lord. We are a part of the 144,000 or a part of the number that you alone can number. So I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give us the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding Thanks for bringing your, um, our brothers here, your sons. Thanks for bringing them here to fellowship with us, worship with us, and to give us more light as we share the light one with another, as we fellowship one with another. So help us, Lord, to grow in love and to grow in unity. And this is your prayer in John 17, to help us to grow in unity. So I pray this is the unity of heaven. So help us to reflect heaven. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.